Good morning, folks. First, this came in my email a day ago. Yes, that's a drone mosquito, aimed to be utilized for urban surveillance. It's a new world. But let's step off-world, way off-world. This is known as GUM-15, and the ESO is documenting how stellar formation in the center of this dusty nebula will eventually overcome, consume, blow away, and eliminate the cocoon in which they were born. Video and article linked below. Sticking off world for a multispectral view of M106, courtesy of Chandra. We have infrared, radio, optical, and x ray. Then we got them all mashed together. Inside joke for website members how asinine is this quality of star water data that comes out within two to three days of every update to the series? If you missed number five, star water, it was a short one, uploaded two days ago. We'll have multiple shorter special uploads during the month of July. For those who haven't seen Starwater, we're having quite a bit of fun. Time to get serious though. What costs 30 million pounds to fix and still doesn't work? One of the reactors at this nuclear plant. The other is running at half capacity due to needed maintenance as well. But the first had to be shut down after a safety alarm was triggered. So far, no other information. Last article comes from NOAA analyzing diabolical winter storms as they occur, like one of the three or four that broke records in the Gulf states this year. This wasn't even the worst one. Elida died, but Douglas inherited the force and remains firm as he moves away from Mexico out to sea. Arthur should take a cue from that because as of now he appears to want to run up the coastline, but the Carolina coast under fire after Florida will get lucky today. We also have a tropics watch in the West Pacific, could this be what we've waited for to finally re-ramp the Philippines seismicity? Been a while, guys. Coming down under, New Zealand recorded the hottest June on record, but I'm willing to bet they'd take that over the frigid Antarctic air rolling up now. Parts of Australia are having their best ski season ever, but that won't last if the near-tropical heat keeps winding down over top of it. Climate extremes swinging back and forth. The convergences are rolling quickly here, hour to hour. Consider the southwest on watch for sure, but the rest is wholly dependent on how fast these run through. Check local forecasts. Arthur's distribution is coming right up the coastline. It already rolled through New England last night and will be a rough go again today. Got some weaker storms in the middle of the country. Be alert, folks. Andromeda calling spaceship Earth with a gamma ray burst in the wee hours of this morning. Earth's magnetosphere is quite calm at the moment, but... That could change as the energy integrates from a solar wind impact here, and although it's not major, a simultaneous speed and density jolt is very evident on the sensitive flux, especially the electrons as they're highly reactive to the proton waves. Solar flaring? All I have to say about this, I said in last night's upload. If this is an extended minimum lead-in, I really don't want to see the grand minimum. Not like we have a choice. So, sunspots are still fun to watch even though they are silent. We have development up north, but the mixing appears to linger on the precipice of complexity. All beta, but spread enough that any delta wouldn't even take a gamma class with it. The delta spots also may not be as solid as we had originally anticipated down south. It looks like we indeed have a bit of decay, especially trailing up north there, perhaps a spread in the south as well. Honestly, the silence of this region is less surprising now. The limb looks mean, but then again, I bet he's just as scared of us as we are of him. Check this out. Venus still connected to the backside of our star, but Mars and Mercury are directly connected to the big sunspot group. And so is Earth. This is something we've seen a good bit in the last two weeks, the three bunched together, but rarely ever saw in past years. Eyes open there. Our next coronal hole incoming is actually transequatorial. So far, ISWA shows above average power, so we'll eye this one as well. Given the sunspot silence, I'm more inclined to watch this plasma filament for an eruption. Don't forget that short update to the Starwater series at the website. More to come. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.